Hi, I'm Sophie from Encodian, and today I'll be showing you how you can start to redact sensitive information from your documents using both Microsoft's AI Builder and Encodian's Flower. So today we're going to be looking at how you can start to redact payment information from invoices. So we're going to build a custom AI Builder document processing model, which is going to identify the sensitive card payment information. And we're then going to put this into Power Automate Flow using Flower's redaction action to actually go ahead and redact these identified pieces of information. So let's have a look at the solution. So within the Power Platform, AI Hub is the new place to go for anything related to AI Builder. And within AI Hub, you can then see all of the available AI Builder models. So we can see here we've got a lot of models that are already pre-built. But we can also see that we can create custom models as well. So we're dealing with invoices today. So yes, there is already this invoice processing pre-built model here. But when you're using pre-built models with AI Builder, you're not able to actually go through and add any custom fields to tag and identify information. So this is the invoice model. So we can see all of the extracted information that it's going to bring back here. And if I just scroll through, we can see that there's nothing to do with card payment information. So if you are just trying to extract the information that is already there, definitely use a pre-built model. But if in like in our scenario, the information is not there, you're going to have to create a custom model. So I've already got a draft of a custom model, which I'm going to walk you through step by step so you can see how you can start to build your own. And the interface is really nice. It's just step by step and you just click through. So there's no coding, no formulas or anything needed. So when you create your custom document processing models, this is the first page that you will see. Now I'm taking you through a draft today of a published model that I've already created for this solution. But I'm just going to take you through it step by step so we can see what you need to do at each stage in the process. And then I'll take you to my already published version so we can see what it looks like at the end. So the first thing it's going to ask you to do is to select what type of document your model is going to be using. So we're using invoices, which is why I've got invoices selected. But you can also choose unstructured documents or structured documents. When you click next, it takes you to the information to extract. So because I've selected an invoice, all of the fields that we saw previously before with the invoicing pre-built model are just going to come up here as default because it's the type of document I'm using. But I can also go ahead and add any custom fields as well. So to add a field, just need to go to add. And then you can add text, number, date, checkbox or table fields to extract from your invoices. So I've already added these in, so I'll just show you what it looks like once you've added them in. And this is what it looks like once you've added in some of your custom fields. You can tell what ones are the custom ones because they don't have that big default button. And you can also easily see what type of field it is that you've added in as well. So once you've added in all your fields, we can just click next. And this takes us to the collections of documents page. So when you're dealing with document processing models, it allows you to be able to process multiple different types of documents under one AI builder model. So that means one model can process multiple different types of documents, meaning that you're not going to have to have a new model for each type of document. So it just keeps things a bit neater when you're dealing with these AI builder models. So for this demo, I've got two different types of invoices and these groups of documents are called collections as well when you're building new models. So my first collection is for invoice type one and my second is for invoice type two. They both have the same information, but the layout is slightly different of the, on the page. So here is where you upload your documents. So because we are training an AI model, the more example documents that you could provide for each collection, the better the results are going to be. And the minimum number of documents that you can provide is five. So just bear that in mind, the more documents you have, uh, yes, the more tagging you're going to have to do, but at the end, it will create a better result. So to add new documents, just need to go to whatever collection you want to upload them for. 
and click Add Documents at the top. Once you've finished adding in all of the documents, you can then go ahead and click Next, and then we'll move on to the tagging process. So I personally think the tagging process is the best bit of creating these models. So we can see here, because this is a draft, I've already got items tagged. However, we can see that I don't have the phone number tagged. Now I don't have a field for phone number, but say I did and I needed to tag this, I can just drag this box around that piece of data and then, and then I can select what tag to do here. But, but because all of my tags are already being used, the ones that I'm using, nothing shows up here. But for example, if I wanted to, I could tag this as cardholder name, but you know it's not. So we can just see here that we've got this tagged as card number. We've got this done as cardholder name. I've got the CVV and I've got the expiry date. And just a note as well, these card payment informations on these examples are not real values. They were created from an online generator. So please do not try and do your shopping using them because it will not work. So this is how you know everything is being tagged. And to move along, you just go up here and you just move along documents. And when they have a tick, it means that all of the, all of the fields that need to be tagged, so all of the custom fields that you've added have been tagged in the document. And once you're finished, you can click save and close. So once you're finished, you can move on to your other collection type. And when you're ready, you can click next. Now that the model is ready, we can see what information we're going to be extracting from the different document types. And we can just go ahead and click train down here at the bottom. Clicking train will then start the process for the AI model to be trained on the data and the examples that you've provided. And this will take a few minutes. So I'm just going to pop to the model that I've already got published to show you what it's going to look like. And this is my published model. We can see here that we are given an accuracy score. So this just gives you an indication of how well your model is working. So we can see we've got 96%, which is a pretty good score. Over here, we can also see the information to extract. So this is going to show you all of those custom fields that we added in, how well that it's working for each one. As well, you can test your model, which of course is really highly recommended before using it to make sure it's working as expected and it's pulling out those right bits of information, because if it's not, you may need to upload some more examples and then retrain. Once you've tested and you're happy, you need to then publish your model. So because the, my model is already published, instead of a publish button, I have this use model button. But when you first create a model and you get to this page, you need to make sure you hit publish. Because if you don't and you go to use it in a Power Automate or a Power App, it's not going to show in the available list of models to use. So just an important note here. If you have tried to use a model that you've created and it's not there, just double check that you have published it. As soon as you've published it, it'll be there ready to use. So now that we've got the model ready, let's have a look at the flow that we're going to be using this in to start the redaction process. Before I show you the Power Automate, I first just want to show you the OneDrive backend. So because I'm dealing with documents, I've just set up a OneDrive folder called Invoices, where I'm going to drop any invoices that need to be redacted. And I've also added this folder here called redacted documents, which is where the redacted invoices are going to be put at the end of the Power Automate. Of course, you could automate the process of your invoices being added to this folder, but for demo purposes, and as we'll see later, I'm just going to drop it in manually. So this is my Power Automate flow. So my trigger is when a file is created and it's going to be pointing to that invoices folder. The next step is where we use our custom AI builder model. So the action needs to be extract information from documents because the model that we're using, even though it's a custom model, it is a document processing model. So this is where it will lie. Underneath AI model here, you can then select the model that you need to use. Form type is the document type that we are inputting into the model. So you can only input PDFs, JPEGs, or PNGs. So if your invoices aren't in this format and you need to convert them, say, to PDF, you can always add an extra step in front of this to convert them to PDF 
using another one of Flower's actions. But for today, my documents are already in PDF format, so I don't need any conversion. And then the form is where you supply the file content of your document. The next step we have is redact PDF, and this is an Encodian Flower action. So we're just going to provide the file name of the OneDrive file, the file content of the OneDrive file, but the inputs that we're using for this action are going to be the outputs from our AI Builder model step. So our AI Builder model, when it runs, it's going to bring back the exact pieces of text that exist for those custom fields. So it's going to bring back the cardholder name, the CVV, the cardholder number, and the expiry date, as it is on the document. And AI Builder actually brings back more information than this. So it also brings, it brings back these text pieces but it also brings back value pieces. And the reason that we're going to be using the text over the value is because, especially when we're dealing with our expiration date, because we set it as a date field, it's going to come back in a date format. So if we wanted to use this, we'd have to use format date time to get it into just the month and the two year format, because it's going to come back as a different way. Whereas if we just use the text of how it appears on the document, we don't have to do any extra steps or use any expressions there. And we know that that's exactly how that piece of data already lies in the document. So when we're inputting data into the redact PDF action, you can input the exact pieces of text that you want to be redacted, like we are using. But you can also use regular expressions as well, if you know what they are for the information that you're trying to redact. But in our scenario today, we're going to be using the text values as this is already an output from our AI Builder model. There's also two bits of UI with this action as well. You can either input information like this, or if you prefer, you can switch to enter it into this JSON array format here. And actually, this makes it a little bit easier just to see exactly what information is feeding in and where we have our dynamic content from the step before. Once the text has been redacted, we can then create a new file back into OneDrive. So this time we're just going to add redacted underscore in front of the file name. And the file content will be that from the previous encodian step. And that's going to contain our redacted invoice. So let's test this and see how this works in real time. So just coming back to my OneDrive, I'm just going to upload some test documents. And now we'll wait for the flow to run. So we can see that the flows have both now run and they've succeeded. So let's head over to OneDrive to have a look at the redacted invoices. So we can see I've got redacted test three and redacted test four. And we can see here all of the card payment information has been redacted correctly. So let's test test four. And we can see that this information has also been redacted correctly, even though it's a different format. So this is just how the model has worked with the two different types of invoice formats that I provided it. So today I showed you how you can start to extract payment information from invoices. However, you can start to extract lots of different types of information from lots of different types of documents. You may just need to create a custom AI builder model to do so, like we went through today as the pre-built ones don't always contain the fields that you need to identify. As it's using AI, it's always recommended to be responsible when using this technology. So having a human step somewhere between maybe emailing out these redacted documents would be really highly recommended because AI doesn't always work as expected. So especially when dealing with sensitive types of information, it's always better to have a human check step somewhere along the way in your process, especially before sending the document on either internally or externally. As always, if you have any questions about anything you saw in the video today, please leave me a comment down below or get in touch with us here at Encodian. And as always, happy automating.